Hello and welcome everybody. My name's Kyle Thompson and it'll be my voice you're listening to over the next 10 minutes or so as I showcase QuickBooks latest development self-employed. First and foremost, this product is available on both Android and iOS devices. You can use that on your iPhone, your iPads, etc. You can also use it on any browser, so it can be used on laptops, desktop PCs, for example. In this scenario, I am going to be doing it on my iPhone. This is a live demo, so apologies in advance if any calls or texts do come through whilst I'm running through here. So going into my app store, the one specifically we're looking at today will be the QuickBooks Self-Employed app. I'm going to open this up here. Now in coming to the app for the first time, yours won't have any data, but I've been using this for a couple of months now. So you can see that there's a couple of handy tiles across the top here, which gives me a shortcut straight through to the, some of the transactions that I need that need attention from me to make sure my records are up to date. But to give you an overview here, this is really built around the tax years. And here in the UK, that's based on the 6th of April to the 5th of April. So here I can see my take home pay from last tax year. So that is my income minus my expenditure, which is giving me my sort of profit. And then it's deducting my taxes as well from that figure there. If I wanted to change that to view onto this tax year, or maybe over the last three months or last month or this month, I can toggle that data and it's going to bring that information back live for me. So also give, give you an idea of where your money's coming in and where it's been spent throughout the months and calendar periods there. Great if you've got a seasonal business, so if you've had high expenses and you want to sort of find out where they came in from. So we're also going to surface the business mileage that I've been tracking through the year. And I'll show you the great functionality in the software that makes it really easy to keep on top of this and make sure you're maximising your reliefs there. It's going to surface the top deductions that I've had running through my accounts within the years in question there. And I will be able to drill into the information behind that in another way. And it's also going to give me a live up to date view of all of my banks. And you can connect as many UK banks as you like on here. There's no cost for doing so. Now these are all up to date 32 minutes ago. Can click the refresh easily. I'm not expecting anything to have come into them there. If you wanted to add other accounts, you can click the manage bank accounts. From here, you could remove if you wanted to, or you click the plus icon to add. It's going to give you a list of the most popular UK bank and building societies there. And if your one's not on the list, then either type in the URL or type in the bank name. For example, I'll use nationwide here. And how you connect through and establish that secure connection is via your online banking credentials. That's all encrypted on our system, so there's no risk to the security there whatsoever. What it's going to do is flow the transactions from your bank statement directly into this tool, QuickBooks Self Employed, making it really easy to keep on top of and reconcile the transactions there and saving you loads of time in the process. I'll show you how that works a bit later. But for me, one of the biggest benefits of this tool is really the invoicing side of things. How easy it is to do, how quickly you can get it done. I actually had a plumber come out to my house a couple of well, a couple of months ago now and done it live with me. He'd invoiced me before he left my house and I'd paid him before he got in his van at the end of my driveway. So if I hit the invoices tool here at the bottom, that's going to give me a list of all of my invoices that I've generated. If I wanted to filter that down to look at draft ones if I hadn't sent them yet, any overdue ones or paid ones, for example, I could. I'll leave that on all. Also services some very handy information. So you can see invoice 104 and 105 there. They've both been paid today. So it's £6,600 that will be coming through the bank shortly. Brilliant. Great news. You can see invoice 103 there. That's due in nine days and it's been viewed. And the one below to Graham Baddeley, that's due in two days and it's been sent. Now that means that Graham hasn't actually opened this invoice. So where that's due in two days, that could be concerning. So I'd either arrange contact with Graham to make sure he's received that okay check the email address and contact details I've got for him. Or in this example, I might give him the benefit of doubt, just not reading it, so I might just go resend, and in two easy clicks, that invoice has been resent as a reminder for Graham, and hopefully I'll get my payment within due dates there. So let's show you how you actually create an invoice. So just simply click in the plus icon in the top right there. It's going to come up with the recent contacts that you've used and also surface through your contacts. For the demo purposes, I'll use myself here, as my colleagues tend to have a moan when I keep sending them through fake invoices. You want to add your invoice item, and this you can pre-type exactly what it is that you're doing for them, or it will also pre-populate with the most frequent work that you've done, and also remember the last price you've charged for that. So if I use consultancy, for example, saying, well, last time I charged a flat rate of £2,000, I could do that in hourly rate if I wanted to, 
per item. I actually leave it as a flat rate and I'm going to amend this after we've actually agreed more favourable terms for myself of £2,500 in this example. Here you can see the payment details that I've defaulted to come in, but if I wanted to change that, if I wanted to go into a different account, I could easily amend that there. I've got the due date, which I've defaulted again to 30 days, but I might want a quicker turnaround, 24 hours, 15 days. There may be no due date because it's actually payment on completion, and I certainly don't want to be chasing the customer up for money before I've completed the job for them. And you can add a message here, so if you wanted to free type anything on there as well, in any sort of amendments that you wanted to be right in. You can easily preview the invoice. And on doing so, that's going to show you exactly what the customer will receive. Now here you can add your own logo. I've just added the QuickBooks self-employed logo for these demo purposes. You can see that line item of consultancy and the amount and the amount of due and the date that that's due by. You can see my payment details and the message and I can see that's all accurate so I'm happy with that. So I'd simply just close that invoice down and send that off now. As easy as that. So that's my invoice generated and sent. Customers got that ready in their inbox now. And even better, it won't just tell me here once they've viewed it, I'll also receive a push notification to let me know. So you can see there an hour ago, I actually looked at invoice 108. You'll also see here that my home base receipt scan is ready. So I'll show you that functionality now along with the banking side of things. So if I click on two transactions along the bottom here, you can see this notification where it's saying that one receipt matched or added to the transactions there. And that is actually that home base one that I've done about an hour ago. If I click on that there, all I've done is simply taken a picture, and I'll just review the picture that I've took here. So once that opens up, that's going to show me the receipt that I've taken a picture of. I didn't actually type any of this information, but it's read that that was home base, it's read that that was £22.50, and it's read that that was the 18th of April for me. So it's made it really easy to keep on top of. I've had to do no data input on that whatsoever. All I'd need to do at this stage is actually decide whether it was a business expense, or a personal expense. And this is something the software makes really, really easy. So one thing in the self-employed markets, a lot of a lot of clients do use the same bank account and therefore have a lot of personal transactions that they can't legally claim tax relief for. And it makes it hard to remember the business transactions that they can and sometimes miss those. So for example, this is actually my live account. So you can see some of my household bills here. So Chelmsford City Council tax. That certainly is an allowable expense for myself. I claim an allowance for use of rooms office. Probably allow myself in prison or certainly have a few capital gains issues when it comes to other households that I want to leave. So I swipe that this way, and that's personal, and that can be removed from my account so I get no relief for that. Likewise, if I show you the home base one, now that actually was a business expense that was for my home office, so it was actually something to do with my desk there. So if I swipe that to the right, that's actually read it correctly. That's brilliant. It's the last time somebody put in home base, they put it there as that category. If I could easily change it to a different category that's relevant here for myself, I'm actually happy with that as home office expense. If I swipe that there, that will go into my account and I'll get the relief. So that's making it really easy to keep on top of my personal and my business expenses. It's making me keep on top of my receipts so I can just take a picture then and there as soon as I've got it and then environmentally dispose of that receipt. So no more shoeboxes full. And the best thing is your accountant can have remote access to this and they can see all of that information as well from in. So the final bit and huge time saver for yourself there will be the mileage tracker I alluded to when I was taking you through the dashboard quickly. So with this, it's done via your phone's GPS navigation effectively and you don't need to start or stop it when you get into your car. You don't need to make sure that the app's open on your phone. You just need to make sure that the phone's on you, you've got auto tracking enabled and location services switched on for that. And in doing so, that will know and learn when you get into the car and your mileage naturally. It's going to keep your start and end points for your audit log and work out the miles that you've travelled along so doing so. And likewise, so for business mileage, I can claim relief up to 10,000 miles of 45p per mile and 25p per mile thereafter. I can't claim relief for personal mileage, so very similar as with the bank. If I want to get that out of my accounts, I swipe that way. So for example, this was me popping home. I can't claim relief for that there. Whereas if I go here, this was actually me last week visiting a client and that is an allowable business expense. So I'll make a note, I'll describe who I was meeting, what the purpose of that trip was, and add that in to make sure I get my tax relief for that. So to summarise, really there, you've got the invoicing side of things, which will make it as easy to get your invoices out 
as quickly as possible, improving the payment terms and the cash flow there. You've got the transactions, which is making it easy to reconcile your bank to keep on track of your personal and your business spending and track your receipts to make sure you're claiming what you're released. Likewise, with the mileage, you can make sure you keep on top of your mileage log. You've got an auditable log there and detailed log and not missing out on any relief there. And combining all of that information, it's going to surface it into a really handy dashboard. And you'll see the take home pay actually changed slightly there where I've just put in the transaction and put in the mileage. They'll all be brought up to date. Now, if you work this in collaboration with an accountant, they can make sure that your tax profile is kept up to date and relevant, that you're putting in any, any other income that you may be receiving. And you can use this to drive your estimated tax payments and start using the artificial intelligence behind to really use this software cleverly on you. So if, for example, if I clear this here in my previous conversation, I can ask the software, what can you do? And it's gonna give you a few bits here. So you can actually, if you wanna ask information about the data held within your accounts, what income you're making, what you're spending on, some of the help bits, so if you wanted actually you get your receipts normally come through into your inbox and you just want to forward them on and have them read automatically, maybe some other help articles here. So if I click that tile, it's going to show me what it can actually help with on you. Maybe it is connecting a bank that I need help with, so it's going to ask me which bank. It might be that my bank isn't listed and it will show me where I can go to sort of get that updated from there. And actually a workaround if it wasn't, for example, how you could add your transactions in from here, or if you didn't want to connect to the bank up. You could also just start free typing and asking it questions. So let's ask it, how much money did I make last month? And that's gonna dig into your data that's held behind. As long as it's accurately reconciled, it's gonna confirm the date period in question. So that's absolutely spot on. It's confirming my income and my expenditure and overall my net income as a result. And it's giving me a percentage of my profit margin. And from there, I could email the full report. It's giving me some smart questions to ask off the back of that. I could even ask it questions like, what is my estimated tax payment? Again, that's going to drill into my information. Now, because we're very early on in the tax year and there's not been much income coming through, I am below the personal amount, so there's no tax to pay as yet. But if I was doing that on last tax year's information, that would give me a live trackable figure that I could be making sure I've got to one side so there'd be no more nasty surprises when January and July payments come and that side of things. So that there is QuickBooks Self-Employed as a great business tool to save you time, help you get paid faster and make sure you're making the most of the reliefs available there for yourselves. I've been Carl Thompson, this has been QuickBooks Self-Employed. Any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Thanks.